Suppose we have a sensitive voltmeter that's attached to a conducting loop. We want to know what the voltmeter reads while the magnet is moving through this loop. And then let's look at what the voltmeter reads when the magnet, when the magnet momentarily stops in the loop. And then let's observe what the voltmeter reads when the magnet reverses its direction. So to do this, I'm going to turn to a simulation from FET. What we have in this simulation is a bar magnet. We have a coil, a conducting coil, that's attached to a voltmeter and a light. So there is nothing else attached. There is no battery, no power supply. From what we've learned so far, this light won't be able to light unless there is a potential difference that allows a current to be driven through this circuit. But right now, all we have in this circuit is some coils of wire, the light, and the voltmeter. Let's calibrate ourselves to this circuit. So notice the polarity of the voltmeter. We have the positive and the negative on the voltmeter. So let's understand what happens if a positive current comes through. What we mean by a positive current is a current that makes the voltage needle go to the plus side. What that means is the current would have to come around in this direction from the coil going through the positive end of the voltmeter out the negative end and coming around back to the far end of the coil. So in this orientation, when the circuit or when the current goes around clockwise, we would call that a positive current because that's going to produce a positive voltage. So now let's see what will produce a negative voltage. A negative voltage occurs just when the current is going in the opposite direction. So when we have the current going through the light from this direction up into the negative terminal of the voltmeter, coming back down through the positive terminal to our coil, this would correspond to a current that is in the opposite direction. So in this case, we have a current that is going clockwise. When the, let's go ahead and call that negative current, just because it's opposite the direction of our positive current that we called. So the negative only signifies that it's opposite to the original direction. And it, in that current direction, we're going to have a negative voltage, because current is going from low to high in the voltmeter. Now with this convention, let's start doing an experiment with our magnet. What does the voltmeter read when the magnet is moving through the coil? What does the voltmeter read when the magnet momentarily stops? What does the voltmeter read when the magnet reverses direction? We are now ready to answer these questions. Okay, let's take a look at this magnet now. And let's start working with the magnet. So if I take the magnet and move it towards the coil, look at the voltmeter. Notice how the voltmeter moved to the negative side. What that means was a negative current was produced when we were moving the magnet to the current loop. Now notice that the magnet is currently stopped and there's zero voltage. Look at what happens when we reverse the direction of the magnet. A positive voltage was produced and the light lit. Now the light will light up whether we have a positive voltage or a negative voltage. We just need a current going through. And it doesn't matter if the current is flowing through clockwise or counterclockwise. So looking at this experiment again, when the North Pole moves towards the loops, we end up with a negative voltage. 
When the magnet stops, no voltage. When the magnet reverses direction, a positive voltage. So that's interesting. So let's go ahead and summarize our results. So I'm going to summarize by just drawing the magnet. We have the north pole of the magnet and the south pole of the magnet. Here is our conducting loop. When the magnet moved where the north pole was approaching the loop, we ended up with a negative current. So that was a current that was flowing clockwise relative to our circuit. Clockwise in the circuit for us means that the current circulated around like this. Now, once it reaches the loop, the current enters the left end of the loop and begins to move around the loop. Now, from the loop's perspective, the current is going around like this. And that's if we are looking at the loop from the right-hand side. So I'll depict that in our sketch over here. So we have the current going around in that direction in the loop, clockwise in our overall circuit, but from the loop's perspective, it's going around counterclockwise. So let's go ahead and change our convention here. We're going to indicate that counterclockwise direction as we are looking at the loop from the right-hand side. We'll go ahead and indicate that now as the negative direction, since we are going to focus on the loop itself instead of the overall circuit now. So now let's look when the magnet stopped moving. When the magnet stopped moving, the current was zero. The light bulb didn't light. And now let's look at it when the magnet reversed direction. When the magnet reversed direction, the current in the loop also reversed direction. Using our new convention, we have the positive current circulating around clockwise from the perspective of the loop. So the positive current is going around like this. Let's look at what the magnetic field lines are doing in these scenarios. So notice when the magnet is moving towards the loop, the number of magnetic field lines increases per unit volume. What that means is that the strength of the magnetic field increases. The magnetic flux is increasing. So notice as the north pole enters the loop, moves towards it, we have an increase in magnetic flux. Notice now the magnetic flux is not changing because we're not moving the magnet. Since the magnetic flux is not changing, there is zero current. Now watch what happens when we reverse direction. When we reverse direction, the magnetic field gets weaker. And notice the current went to the positive direction. So current is, so when we move towards, we ended up with a negative current. When we move away, we end up with a positive current. When the number of north magnetic field lines increases, we end up with a negative current. When the number of north magnetic field lines decreases, we end up with a positive current. In other words, when we have a change of magnetic flux in the orientation of the positive magnetic pole, we end up with a negative current. And when we have a reduction of the magnetic flux, fewer magnetic north pole lines, we have a positive current. When we have no change in magnetic flux, zero current. 
So there's something about changing magnetic flux that induces a current. And, and specifically, let's go ahead and reverse the orientation of our compass. And let's observe now what happens to the magnetic flux. Let's observe now what happens to the light and the voltage in our circuit. Notice when the south pole enters the loop, we had a positive voltage indicating a positive current. So, so let's look at it. So the number of south magnetic field lines is increasing we end up with a positive current. So in other words, the magnetic flux was increasing such that the south, the magnetic flux increased in such a way as to produce a positive current. When we reverse the direction, the magnetic flux decreases in such a way to, pr to produce a negative current. So notice in this orientation, the magnetic south pole strength is increasing, giving us a positive current. And when the magnetic south pole strength decreases, decreasing the magnetic flux, we get a negative current. Let's go ahead and draw our conducting loop. Here is the south magnetic pole. Here is the north magnetic pole. Let's label these as south and north. Let's go ahead and copy these so we could reuse them later. Okay, so let's look at these scenarios. When the south pole, well, let's look at it. So when the south pole enters the loop, let's perform that experiment. South pole enters, we have a positive voltage signifying a positive current. So remember, the positive current means that our current is circulating clockwise from the perspective of the right side of the loop. So here is that positive current. When the magnet stopped moving, we had zero current, just like before when we had the opposite orientation. And when the magnet reversed directions, we ended up with a negative current. Well, let's do that just to remind ourselves. So when the magnet reversed directions, we have a negative current. That negative current from the perspective of the loop means that the current is circulating counterclockwise as we view it from the right side of the loop. So that's very interesting. Without touching anything, just by changing the magnetic flux, we are able to change the fact that this circuit has a current, and we're able to change whether or not the current is positive or the current is negative.